Hey there, it's Lisa, and sorry it said that we weren't connected for a second, and I know that um, the battery's low, but in any event, I just wanted to jump on here for a couple of minutes with uh, something that the Lord put on my heart this morning, and it's been on my heart all day today, and it's about performing to get God's attention or to, you know, for doing uh, things to feel like you, you know, you've got to do something in order for God to hear you and to answer your prayers. And my friend, it doesn't work like that in the kingdom. When Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are literally a joint heir. That means, you know, Jesus is your big brother, right? So when you've asked Jesus to literally come into your heart, God the Father sees you as his child, and you are in right standing with God the second that you've asked Jesus to come in and be your Lord and Savior, and you meant it with your whole heart. You know, so many people are, they feel guilty and they feel condemned because they just feel like they're not good enough to go to God and talk to him or to, you know, ask him, you know, anything. And my friend, I'm telling you, you watching today, it's not your performance that puts you in right standing with God. We hear the word righteousness. That means being in right standing, right? It's right standing with God. Righteousness. Our righteousness does not come from ourselves and from anything that we could do. Our righteousness, our right standing with God only comes by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior and putting our trust in Him. It's believing on what He did for us at the cross that puts you in right standing with God. When, you are, when you've asked Jesus to come in and be your Lord and Savior, you're now a joint heir with Jesus. God the Father is your Father, right? We know that God is the creator of all, but not everybody has that relationship with God the Father. That only comes through Jesus Christ through asking Jesus Christ to come in and be your Lord and Savior. And then it's not about your performance. Now, am I saying that you don't need to do good works? Uh, no, faith without works is dead. Here's the thing. When you really understand how much God the Father loves you, what Jesus did for you, it's going to be easy to do good, right? Because And the reason that God hates sin so much is because it destroys people. He doesn't hate the sinner. He died for the sinner. Jesus loves the sinner. He hung out with the sinners, right? He said it's not the healthy people that need a doctor. It's the ones who are, who are sick, right? So anyway, this is the message of my heart today and what I believe that the Lord would speak to you today. Don't try so hard to, you know, don't feel guilty and condemned because of the things that you've done that you feel like you can't go to God. You know, I was talking with a young man yesterday, um, 16 years old, and he was saying that um, he just, I, I said, have you sought the Holy Spirit lately? You know, have you been alone with God lately? And he said, no, I feel like I haven't been able to go to God. Why? Because of sin. Listen, and I, and I had to explain this to him, and I said, listen, it's not about you. It's about what Jesus did for you. But, but the thing is, is if you continue in that counsel from the evil one, right? When you, when you willingly sin, there's consequences, right? And the Lord said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We've got to understand that, again, when Jesus is your Lord and Savior, it's not about your works. It's not about your performance. But sin has consequences. The reason he hates sin is because sin destroys people. It allows access to the, to the enemy to come in and wreak havoc and destroy lives. So we've got a choice. So I want to try to stay on point here. You know, nothing is scripted. This is all from my heart and I believe from the heart of God. He wants you to understand, listen, when we do good things, when we think, you know, about him all the time, when we want to honor God, we're going to we're going to show that in our actions toward other people. God is love. Jesus is love. And if we want to model Jesus, we've got to model love. And I'd say not consequently, but um, the, the, the great byproduct of that is good things. You know, you're honoring God. God honors you. When you are humble, humility comes before honor. And when you honor God, God is going to honor you. But it's not about your works. I'm trying to separate things here. I really hope that you hear my heart here. It's not about what you do that's going to get God to move. 
Okay, it's your belief in Jesus. It's your your pursuing of Jesus. It's your belief in Jesus and the finished works and what he did for you at the cross. That is what brings you into right standing with God. Understanding that you are, once Jesus, you've asked him to come in, you're a joint heir with Jesus and God is now your father. You are automatically in right standing with God if Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Period. You don't have to do anything else. However, now you want to Go after the things of God and seek the Holy Spirit. What do you want me to do, Lord? And then do whatever he's telling you to do. That's how you give glory to God. He's going to turn around and, and uh, you know, give himself glory through you as you honor him. You're going to see miracles and, and, and awesome things that you've never seen before as you really give your heart to Christ. This is how the victorious life happens. So... Anyway, I don't want to go on and on here, but I just wanted to let you know that putting your faith in what Jesus already done, what he already did for you at the cross, that is what puts you in right standing with God. Our righteousness is not our own. It was bought with a price, right? So your right standing with God, it's not, it doesn't come from you. It comes from what Jesus already did and from what you, and from you placing your trust and your belief wholeheartedly in what he did for you. That is what puts you in right standing with God. You say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life. I repent for my sins and I believe that God the Father raised you on the third day. Come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior. Be the Lord, the King of my life. Give me the direction and show me what you want me to do. Take my life and do what you want with it. Wow, that's honor. That is a blessing. That, oh my gosh. That is when, you know, you mean that with your whole heart. I promise your whole life will change. You will still go through, of course, trials and tribulations, right? Jesus said we would, but he said rejoice because I've overcome the world. So as long as we're in these human bodies, there are things that we are going to have to overcome. There's battles that we're going to have to you know, fight through. But the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and it cuts through everything. So anyway, that's another message for another day. But I just wanted to tell you, stop struggling if you are with guilt and condemnation because of things that you've done or haven't done where you feel like you can't go to God because you feel guilty. Don't do that because it's not even about you. It's about what Jesus did for you. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I just give it all to you. I repent. I'm sorry, you know, for these actions and, or, and for, you know, maybe, um, maybe he's been dealing with you about nutrition, about your health, that you need to eat better, right? But you just haven't done it. And now there's some consequences going on, right? So all you need to do is say, Lord, I am sorry that I didn't listen. And Lord, I give it to you right now. I ask you to, Lord Jesus, just wash me clean. Guess what? You're forgiven in an instant. You're forgiven in an instant for not having listened and obeyed, you know, the Holy Spirit. So you're forgiven in an instant. The minute you confessed any kind of sin, bam, you're forgiven. It's a done deal. Now, but you mean it with your whole heart. You repent. That doesn't mean just mean that you're sorry. It means now you choose to go in a different direction. And as you do that and you say, Holy Spirit, give me your wisdom. Oh, Lord Jesus, let me just live for you. Give me your wisdom. Give me clarity. You know, help me in this area, that area. Tr friend, you are going to start living victoriously. Maybe it's a relationship with a husband, a, a wife, your kids, right? Maybe you haven't been there for them enough. It's trying. It's time to change that around. You want to give glory to God? That means honor your family. All right. Um, ah! I just, you know, my, my heart is to help you to get to live in such a place of victory that you are just in rest all the time, every day, and that when things come up that you have to deal with, you know how to get in a room and take authority, and you know, are there going to be times that you cry, you get before the Lord? Absolutely, right? I do too, but he always gives us the victory because he's already given it to us, but we need to go after him so we know how, you know, how to submit to him, resist the enemy, and the enemy flees. Anyway, all right, I love you, I bless you in Jesus, and um, I just hope that this has been a blessing to you. If it has, feel free to share it with someone else. Be sure to like the page. I've got so much more. So I love you. I bless you in Jesus. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. God bless you. And I will talk to you real soon. All right. Bye-bye now.